Hello everybody, good day to you. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whichever one of those applies at this current point in time. We have ourselves a Doge Ramicus 1500. I believe it is a 2011 model with 139,639 miles on the odometer. Starting the engine. No diagnosing today, no probing, no listening for noises, no AC. We're gonna do something a little bit different. This is gonna be fun. It's really quite warm in here. All right, we're there. Parking the auto. Powering down. Yeah. All right, so right here, we got ourselves a box of goodies. Yeah, you see where this is going, don't you? Come here. Let's see, we have a horn. We have an air compressor. Got a relay, a little bit of wiring, a fuse, assuming that goes to the battery. Some more wiring, another relay, a switch, more wiring, some stickers, no, and some other stuff. All right, and the brackets for the horn. Yeah, we're going to mount an air horn on that doge right there. Uh, so uh, here's what I'm thinking. The way they want you to do this is to disconnect your uh, your horns and then just plug this relay into your horn circuit and just take your regular horn out of the equation and uh, just use this as your new horn. We're gonna do something different because our doge owner would like to have the option to run their horn or not. And we were going to run another switch inside of the cab to just actuate that switch, but that's boring. And uh, you know, when you need a horn, you don't want to fumble around looking for a switch. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take this switch and another relay and wire it in so that this horn actuates off of the factory horn button on the steering wheel and it will use the factory horn wiring. What this switch is going to do is activate and deactivate this relay, which is going to give permission for this horn to even become active. Basically, I'm gonna hook this horn up to the truck where the factory horn goes, but I'm gonna be able to not use it with a switch, thus enabling the factory horn to always work, and then this horn to work sometimes on the factory horn button. That's that's the plan. I think I explained it better on the second time around. So let's get to it. First things first, we need to figure out where to uh, mount this unit. Okie dokes, here at our Doge, we find it is powered by a 5.7 liter Hammy V8 but we're not interested in that. Okay, so we have plenty of space behind the grill. I think I'd like to mount it here somewhere if I can get away with it. So let's go ahead and pop this grill out of here and then uh, figure out where to set this horn up. 10 millimeter. I think there are just four bolts and some clips to hold all this together. Yeah, whoa. Jumped right out at me. Very good. All right, so that's a negative. Can't go there, can't go on any of this. Maybe I can reuse one of these mounts right here. Hey, did these holes line up? I can, no, those, they don't. I was thinking of turning that, using those holes to mount it. Maybe I can do that. It's kind of clever. There's a little cross member right here too I can Try to mount the horn to that. Maybe run some uh, hose clamps around it and clamp it down. It, it'll fit right here nicely, and then I can use this space for the, uh, the pump. Yeah, let's do that. I like that. All right, let's see how this is gonna work out. Now you can see here, there's like this uh, this raised area in the stamping on this piece, which means if I were to try to mount this flat it can rock either way and we don't want that we want it to favor this side so it clears the uh, ac condenser and does not uh, rub a hole in it so i need to take up some of that space and i'll do that just with a, a random bolt watch this it's totally gonna work like i said i'm gonna secure this with hose clamps That's 
that's good. Yep. So, slide that in like that. We're going to move it down so that the bell of the horn clears the edge of this cooler. I think that's the spot. This might not work out, but it's worth a shot. Ideally, I would like to just run self-tapping screws into something solid to mount this, but I don't have a large enough, flat enough surface to do that with, so we're doing the hose clamp method. It's gonna work. Reload. Click. Oh, it's it's not sitting flat just because that screw. I want to readjust that. That displeases me. Hey, perfect time to unveil a new set of Nipex Cobra pliers. Adjustable. I need to press that down some. A viewer bought me these, and I would like to take the opportunity to say thank you. So do you guys call them Nipex or Knipex? Because I've heard people pronounce the, the K, and uh, I'm not entirely certain that that's accurate. So maybe we should take a vote on that. What do you guys think? Is it Nipex with an N or Knipex with a K? You tell me. Well, whatever it is, they're very good flyers. Okay, that's actually solid, a lot. Okay, one more clamp on that front, little front mount up there, and this thing will be uh, will be good to go. And now you see what I've done here. Oh, that with my arm in the way. Come on, go in. Bear with me, fellas, bear with me. Got it started. Try this again. What? Click. That's good. Okay, so I've got the compressor here, and the way that it mounts is off of this little guy right here, this little uh, tab or whatever notch. Uh, this is the discharge pipe which connects to the hose right here so i've got to mount this within reach of this hose unless i get a longer hose which i don't have uh, the other thing that's weird about it is i've got to pass the bolt through something the way this is supposed to work is i take the gravity the bolt goes in like so and then wherever i'm going to mount this run that through and then tighten it down with a nut um, I don't have any mounting hardware, really. Uh, I'd like to mount it here, but I've got to get the nut, and I think I can go through here, which means what I'll need to do is drill a hole in this, run this through, and I can mount it right there, and that'll give me space enough for the hose, and it's a good secluded out of the way area to mount this. I think we can do that, let's try that. All right, so I'm gonna mount the pump right here, and we're gonna drill a hole here so the stud can come up so I can put a nut on the stud to actually bolt the pump down. That's uh, that's our plan. So I, I am drilling a hole in this doge. You guys know I don't like to drill holes in frames, but this one's got plenty of holes in it already. Oh, it's walking. Let's make sure there's no wires there, we're good.
Excellent. Okay, here's how we're gonna do this. We've got the pump with the bolt. I have the claw and the washer. And then here's my nut. Loud noise. Put our washer on, release. And I think I can even thread this on a little bit with the claw. Yes, I like this tool. Let's tighten this thing down. Flickage. Sweet. That's good. Nice and solid. I like that. Now, there is a ground cable. There is a ground wire here. I think I'll just uh, ground that right over there. That'll work. But the real question is, is the hose going to reach? Oh, it does. Close, but it reaches. Nice. Click. All right, that's good. I accept this. I'm looking to mount the relay now. Now the yellow wire, that's the low wire that is supposed to power the pump. But uh, I don't want to put it down here because I think it'll get water in it and it just get ruined. So I think I'd like to put it maybe over here. There's another relay I need to run. I can fit that right here, I think. And then I've got access to the power supply. So let me drill some holes in this and I can bolt uh, this relay in its bracket to this plastic right here. I can see behind this, there's uh, no wires I'm gonna poke a hole through. So now we need to go in with the low profile hole drilling device. It's actually a carbide bit, but it'll work on plastic. It's not a perfect hole, but it will work. Okay, we've got the tab that is the mount for the relay. Let's get this thing bolted on and set up first, and then we'll click the relay over top of its mount. I've got my washer. Fortunately, there's some space there. I can fit a tool in. There we go. Thread. Come here, nut. There. Well, that's tighter than I thought. Oopsie. There we go. This will work. I'll just finish it off like this. See the mount all right so now the relay you can clip onto that mount perfect and, okay now we can attach the power wire and the fuse to a 12 volt source and i choose this one right here you can't see there's one we're gonna use that one we have a fuse in this Yep, 30 amp. Click. I need to move that so the lid closes. There. Oh, 
Okay, good. And the remainder of this wire, I'm gonna zip tie this up and make it nice and pretty. Let's just do that right now. Around the cable, and we'll just tie up this bunch and the fuse to the battery cable, and everything will be secure. Come on. That'll do. Good. Nice and tight. Okay, so we've got to connect the yellow, which is our load wire, over here to our load, which is the pump. And uh, I cut a length of wire to do such things. I put a spade on the end of it and heat shrinked it. So that will be uh, nice and weatherproofish for a while. Plug that guy in. So we'll plug this guy in and then I'm gonna run this wire with this loom. I'm not gonna put it inside of it, but I'm gonna run it along this loom right here over there to that yellow wire and then I'll make the connection over there. Okay, a couple zip ties later and some uh, correct wire routing and this is in good shape. Okay, now I need to connect my load wire to uh, my load wire extension that I made. Let's chop this guy off. Now, I'm gonna use one of these, uh, it's like an aircraft crimp solder type of butt connector. I've, I've never used such things before. Uh, I've had a couple viewers send me these to experiment with. Um, if I do it wrong, I'm sorry, I just don't know. Uh, maybe I'll do better the next one. Um, I'm just, I'm not sure how this is gonna work out. I may have to cut them off and try again. This is the device in question. It's a heat shrink type of deal. It's got a band of solder in the middle. And I think those are shrink bands as well. It's basically feed your wires in and then heat it. The solder will melt and contract and then fuse your wires together. That's what I understand. I know they work. I just don't know if I possess the skills to make them work. Uh, in a desirable fashion. But we shall see. Let me try something here. I think I'm supposed to kind of fan these out and, and shove them together like this. I may have to use a larger uh, connection, connector. Yeah, I need a bigger connector. Okay, I will try the medium blue. Let's do this again. Let's go through it. Shove our strands together. Is this gonna work, you guys? Am I doing it right? Yeah, that's it. I need to put a twist on them. Okay. Let's give it some heat. Is it gonna work? Mm, I don't see the solder liquefying just yet. Ooh, there it goes. What do you know, that solder is melting. How about that? Oh, these are cool. I like them. Yeah, I see the solder wicking through the 
exposed wire. A little bit more on this side and I think we're good. Sweet. These are nice. It's my new favorite. They take a while to complete and it's a little painstaking, but it's a nice connector. Ah, I'm bleeding. Medic! Okay, the last remaining wires for this relay, the blue and the white, these are going to be the power and the ground, which is going to uh, be the actuation circuit for the relay. Uh, the relay is just basically a big switch, and that big switch is going to be controlled by a small switch. That way the smaller switch does not have to be carried by the current, and in this case it's going to be the horn switch. So we're going to ground one side, and we're going to hot the other side. That's going to close the switch inside of the relay, and then that's going to take the power from the relay's power supply, send it over to the load line and then actuate whatever load we've uh, we decided to use whether it be horns or lights or air compressors or whatever the purpose of this is for ease of installation and so you don't have to have your switch capable of carrying all the current that uh, your load may carry uh, for example if you had a light bar that thing may run 20 25 amps of current continuously well that switch may only be able to handle 10 amps continuously so we use a relay that carries the load. Too I think I'm going to do the same thing here that I did uh, with the ground wire that uh, goes to the pump and I'm just going to go ahead and ground this to the nearest possible ground which is actually uh, there's a body ground right there. Can you see? Yep right there. So I'll just extend this wire out and then bolt it into uh, this body ground and uh, that will facilitate the ground function of the relay. So I, uh, I really don't feel like getting fancy, so I'm just going to use red wire for that ground circuit also. I've, I've got a whole bunch of red wire and uh, not much other color wire. So I'm just going to do all this in red wire. Some of you will not approve. Some of you don't care. We play with the toys that gods give us. All steam. It's working. I just saw the solder flow. There it goes. This is awesome. Okay. Shove the heat shrink on there before it's too late. I'm mostly doing that for aesthetic purposes. I just think it looks better. And overkill. Totally moisture protection overkill. So this wire, we're just gonna tuck it in very nicely with the existing harness. And I'll come up from behind this plastic thing right here. And we'll mount it right at that screw. So we're gonna cut right here. Snip. Lumens. All right, let us make 
our, uh, our terminal, or terminate the end of this wire, rather, so we can ground the relay. You'll see what I'm doing with all this heat shrink in a second. Get on there, that's it. See what I've done? Very clean look. I really like the overlay when one piece of heat shrink meets another one. Very good. Okay. Question is, do I want to go in front or behind? Hmm. I think I'll go in front. That way I don't add something in between the factory wiring and the aftermarket wiring. Let's run this behind the bracket. That way we have a clean look. Fresh and clean. You know, I could stack that like that behind it all the way. I, I'm really undecided. I think it fits better like that. Yeah, I'm gonna do it like that. No, no I'm not, no I'm not. Because this eyelet in the back is smaller than the big one. I don't, I don't wanna do that, it's ugly. Okay, that's good. Clean install. I think we're done under here. We don't need this box. Okay, now for the moment you've all been waiting for, I'm gonna run the actuation wire. Um, I'm not gonna have time to get to the, the switch in the dash. I wanted to put a kill switch in this in line with the, uh, the factory horn with another relay. I don't have time to do that today. So I can probably, uh, I'll do that in, um, maybe tomorrow or at a later date. Uh, but what I am gonna do right now is just go ahead and run this actuation wire uh, to the blue circuit and I'm gonna run this back over here to the factory horns and I'm gonna tap into the power at the factory horn. So the factory horn button, or the factory horn actually, the connector, will serve as the power source to actuate this relay, which will then jump power from the battery over to the motor, which will then pump the air to make the horn go bam. That's the plan. So, one more time, one more wire. We'll get this guy uh, crimped on and heat shrunk, and then I'll run the actuation wire back over the grill. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm not gonna use a, uh, a, uh, one of the good crimp connections on this, or the solder connectors, because this is just gonna be a temporary circuit, so I'm just gonna use the, uh, the generic style uh, blue crimp. This won't be here for long, so I don't want to uh, use my good stuff on a temporary splice. This car is not staying the night, and I'm not going to stay for another hour or so. Can't do that. But it comes back to the shop every day, so I have plenty of opportunity to uh, fix it up later. But for right now, 
think we're good. Let's pull some extra out. That's enough to reach. We'll cut that off. Come here. And I'll just follow that other red wire that I ran. Do -do 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 -do. some slack good okay here's the wire we just made and I'm just probably gonna use this connector right here come here to tap into it so again this is uh, just temporary don't get mad at me but I've got a kind of a special case wire connector right here uh, I used to install the uh, breathalyzer machines for the court system and uh, the machines had to be tapped into the main wiring harness to the ignition. And these are the connectors that they gave us. But there was always a couple extra, so I saved them. So that's in. And then on the other side of it, we just got a little, uh, little needle that's going to pierce the wire. And then this will clamp down on the other side of it and it'll uh, make a circuit connection. Assuming that black is ground and this blue is the power wire, let's just go ahead and do that right now. And yeah, I can reseal this later. It's just a, a temporary little pokey poke. Okay, I believe that connection is made. Let's just plug this horn back in. I'll zip tie these up and out of the way, temporarily. See here. Yeah, that's good. Sorry, I was talking with a zip tie in my mouth. Bad manners. Okay, let's go hit the button and see what it does. You guys stay right here and listen. Throw the grill back on. Uh, it's in the day. I'm getting out of here, guys. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know the drill. Let me know about that effectively by tap tap that like button down below. If you did not enjoy this video, let me know about that too. So again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourself a great day. Get in there. Click. Two clicks, here we go. See you guys later. All done, see you later, Doge.